Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to episode 4 of Factorio Space Age. Oh, this is so great. I'm so, so hyped for what we're uh, going to be doing soon. And heck, I'm having fun just playing vanilla, though there are so many things that feel just different enough that it, it still feels fresh to me. Um, I did clear a few nests since the last episode. And I set up a little bit more of the steel production that we had already showed you. So what we're going to be doing now is automating some of the things that need steel. So I'm going to leave some space here and then we're going to work on um, steel furnaces. And we're going to work on... Is that it? Oh, and then uh, assembling machine twos. And maybe pumps? Hmm. I don't think I need to automate storage tanks. Ooh, combinators. We have circuits now. And landfills available. Um, I don't really need landfill, but in case I want it. Uh, okay. So I need to bring steel all the way down here. And... We need gears and circuits again. So I need this to do that. And then I need to bring steel down. Um, somehow. Okay, that works perfectly. So we'll bring steel down over here. The problem with storage tanks automation is when am I going to need more than one to five? I just... I. It's going to be an extremely long time before I would need... Uh, I screwed that up. Uh, what did I do? Why am I getting green chips on this belt? Uh, uh, what is happening? Oh, oh, it's the splitter right here. I didn't even see that. Um, I can fix that by doing this. Yeah, 50 stone to one landfill. Is that a different price than it used to be? Again, showing my not remembering what vanilla recipes actually look like here. All right, so there we go. Automated of whatever these are called, assembling machine twos. And then I'd like to automate mediums and large. Oh, they're the same now. Okay, they changed that. Medium poles have a new recipe. Copper cables, sticks, and plates. All right. So... So for that, we need some sort of... It used to be 20. Oh, wow, so landfill's way more expensive. Interesting. I wonder why the change. Probably related to other planets, but I don't know if landfill works the same on other planets or not. Uh, I'm uncertain about these things. Okay, so I want to get steel over here. So I can work steel across like that. And then what I'm thinking is we have like... Building, 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 building. For the sticks and the wire, and then this is the two types of hole. And then chest, chest. Do that, we need to bring steel over and we need to bring copper down like that there's copper and then steel ah shucks um I don't want steel to be here That works really nicely, and that can move over there. It was 50 in space exploration. 
Uh, I thought this wasn't space exploration. <laughs> they told us it would be different. Less punishing. Uh, missing that one. And then... Yeah, I mean, this is fine. Okay, sweet. Medium poles are here. Long live. Medium poles. Death to small. Electric poles. I really need to change that hotkey. Because uh, it keeps showing up. Okay. I have as two things. Because it defaults to disconnect train. How about shift K? Because when... How often do you actually need that? I don't know if I've ever used that once in my factorial career. But, uh... Yeah. Oh! Uh, hey, Chris H. How's it going? Hope you're having a blast with Space Age. Can't stick around, but looking forward to the VOD later. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoy. Enjoy your day. You also started your beta save on a desert. Old man desert engineers unite. <laughs> It's it's kind of a desert. I feel like my my desert is kind of a an easy easy version desert cuz I've got some big forests around. And this land over here is low moisture but it's not zero moisture. And I don't know if that affects pollution absorption either. I don't I don't remember exactly how those numbers work. But yeah, also Vulcanus having free stone kind of makes landfill a lot cheaper on Vulcanus, so that could be part of it too. There's a lot of potential reasons that they that they made that cheaper. But yeah, so now those are automated. These guys are automated. Let me... What am I trying to do? I'd like to get rid of these and now only use these. These are the future future you say and then what I'd like to research now that I have uh, well there's a lot of researches you have to go through to get the non non bulk hey there's a new word non bulk inserter capacity plus one uh, we have to go all the way through the oil and stack inserter I just said stack inserter it's gonna take a long time to unlearn what these are called um, but yeah, oh, trigger tech. Oh, you have to mine crude oil now. Even though you don't have to make it, you have to mine it. Interesting. OK. Did you just see infinite tool belt? Uh, did you? No, just there's just one more. Tool belt equipment. Oh, it's an actual equipment. So you can get legendary, legendary tool belt. You can be Tim the Legendary Tool Belt Man. Um, that's gonna be great. All right, let's get our stuff upgraded here. I don't, what do we need to upgrade? Science first. I mean, science is doing fine. If anything, I need to make more... Eh, maybe it's not doing fine. We'll upgrade it. It's easy. That's literally all I have to do. All right, so now that's 50% faster. Um, I forget, are they more efficient? They're more pollution efficient, but they use more energy. But I think they're still overall more efficient for pollution as well. Even accounting for the pollution you make to, to create that energy. So we'll just switch everything over. There's no real reason not to. Oh, look at that, it was perfect. I had exactly enough. Are you kidding me? Is that literally every single assembler in my base? I had exactly 50? Oh my gosh. I'm not counting those because they weren't doing anything yet. Wow. That's fun. What does a legendary tool belt do? Well, I don't know, but there are stories told about it because it's legendary. Um, <laughs> the legends... What do the legends say about the tool belt? It gives you more inventory space. That's what it actually does. But past that, I know not. All right, let's get 
Steel furnace is automated, and then... Is there anything else? Maybe engines? You need a lot of engines, though. For thing I'll, I'll probably wait on engines. And I'll just do one big engine automation area. So for now, let's just focus on the steel furnaces, which is going to require something like this. Oh, I need more belts. Um, let me grab my belts. And then I'll do red belts. That can be next. Oh my gosh. That's new. You can sweep. You can mouse sweep like in Minecraft. <gasps> Whoa. I just did that on accident. Holy cow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Though it can cause some accidents, but I still think overall awesome. Wow. That's neat. I don't think they spoiled that. I don't think they told us that. Did they? I don't know. I can't. I read all 60 FFFs two days ago, and I still don't remember what they told us. Still don't remember anything. Um, all right, let's do this. So basically, I just need... Is one enough? So wait, I need... I need six plates and ten bricks. And these are going to make bricks at some horrible rate. Um, so we'll, we'll certainly leave room for extras here. Stack one million landfill in crafting queue and then cancel it. Oh my gosh. Would it go... It, what happens when you cancel stuff that was consumed for crafting and then it doesn't fit in your inventory? Does it go on the ground? Okay, so these make 0.31 a second, meaning a full steel one will make 0.6 a second. Which, I keep going here to look at the recipe, and then it doesn't show me the recipe. I'm going to have to get used to this. So 0.6 a second means it would take me 1 over 0.6, like 1.5. Like 15 seconds per steel furnace for a minute. I think 2 is enough. I think 2 is enough. It, it'll build up over time, right? Like, this isn't something we need millions of per second. It does go on the ground. Okay, well, that's funny. That's funny. So you could spill a very large square of stone by handcrafting landfill. Uh, can you handcraft it is the question. You sure can. There it is. Interesting. So oil gathering is... Well, gathering oil couldn't unlock the pump jack, because how could you gather the oil without the pump jack? What well, gathering oil unlocks is the refinery stuff and yeah this is a new icon too certainly i don't know if i like it what the heck is it even showing what what even is this icon that's not the refinery i don't know before i think it was just the basically the oil refinery on an icon but now it's just weird stuff it's got like weird little pipes coming off the top. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, so now we've got steel furnaces. Abstract art. Yeah, landfill. Wait a second, no, landfill is still lying. The landfill research was just the grass. Now landfill is inconsistent, because this is the landfill research, but that's not the icon. So that's interesting. Y 
Yeah, I wonder I wonder why they've changed I mean some of the changes like the radar looks the same but just like higher quality. But like that oil one, I wonder what the purpose of that is. I'm not I'm not entirely certain. Um I don't know. I guess I don't need to be certain. Uh let's automate red belts. Let's automate red belts. So, red belts are expensive in terms of iron. Um, do I want to use these? Or do I want to just make them anew? How do I want to do all this? Uh, I think I will... I think I will use these. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna completely transfer to only using red belts, so I'm not gonna store these up anymore. Um, at some point when we switch to a bot mall, I will just active provide those and we'll get that all figured out. Okay, so we'll make red belts over here. We're gonna need a lot of gears for it. here. Ooh. Ooh, new fluids. Flo fluoroketone. Fluoroketone hot. Fluoroketone cold. What's the cost for the fourth tier belts? Um, I don't know. I'm not, I don't quite want to look it up yet. Okay, those are the only two new things we can barrel, at least from from now. Did I not research red belts yet, or can I just not find them? I didn't research them yet. It's important to research a thing before you try to actually build a thing. Okay, so we are going to need a lot of gears, though. That much is not up for debate. I think four gear makers is enough. Yeah, I mean, that can use 12 iron alone. It's crazy. Um... Three iron in, probably needs two inserters. All right, so there's iron gears coming, coming along. And then and these things come along. Problem is we also need green chips for the um, splitters. So we're gonna have to bring these forwards and grab them like so. I think just visually, I wanna kinda hide this a little better. After playing Satisfactory, how does it feel? Ugh, it feels good. Honestly, I like Satisfactory, but I don't like the logistics in Satisfactory a whole lot. I think Satisfactory is beautiful. It feels really good to play in a way that Factorio doesn't. Not that Factorio feels bad. It's just there are good feels you get from Satisfactory that don't exist in the same way in Factorio. So like there are some really cool things, but at the end of the day, the logistics are just a pain in the butt to set up. And I was realizing one thing I don't like is going and getting a new resource. Getting an ore patch in Factorio is fun because you can blueprint things in a way that make it like, the more you blueprint, the more it can literally be like, click, 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 and you're done. Whereas in Satisfactory, it's like, oh, I wanna go get this iron ore hours away. Like I have to, even if I blueprint my rails, I have to hand build all of those blueprints and I have to hand connect them all and then I have to build a new train stop which can't be blueprinted fully um and so it's like even just with trains which so drones would be the easiest but drones are too slow for like a full or thing so so yeah I think I think with satisfactory I did start to get frustrated with how difficult it was to fetch resources 
And and that's on me, you know, like I could have tried to be a little more patient with that, I think, but it just wasn't fun. So that's part of the issue. Uh, I didn't enjoy going and getting new resources. And so because of how difficult it was to set up mining outposts, I found that to be a tedious part of the game. The good news is I didn't need that many resource outposts to beat the game. So really, that is kind of more of a mega basers thing. But I don't think I could ever enjoy mega basing in Satisfactory. It's just too much. The 3D element is sweet, though, and being able to build architecture is really cool. You know, that's something that doesn't exist in Factorio, like, at all. So I did, I did like that. All right, please tell me I didn't forget the recipe. Good, we're good. Okay, and these don't need plates either. Didn't these used to need plates as well as gears? I think they might have. My my brain is loosely feeling like that might have been a thing. Modded Minecraft. Well, I don't know if you can really compare modded Minecraft to Satisfactory that closely, simply because one is voxel-based and one isn't, and that alone just completely changes the vibe. Now, this is going to take forever to get going, especially because we're short on iron, apparently. Short on everything, as usual. But once we can upgrade the iron belt to red, then we'll, we'll get rolling. I don't know if I like... that the gears are getting prioritized to the undergrounds. Um, hmm. I mean, there's not like an easy way to make this better. Other than just going the other way. You know, I could split it, which is not crazy. At least for now, this isn't crazy. Um, there's certainly a, a world where we undo this, but for now, I think... Because I also don't want to only get belts and not get any of the splitters and undergrounds. Splitters, I don't mind being high priority because they're just going to back up pretty quick. They only take... Um, I keep going here to look at the recipe, and there's no recipe here. Uh, they only take 10 apiece, so they don't take that many gears, so I didn't. I wasn't worried about them. But the, the undergrounds take 40 per pair, which means per stack of undergrounds, you need 25 times 40 is 1,000 gears, I believe. So that's a lot. <laughs> it's easier to make ugly factories than satisfactory. Uh, it depends. Yes and no. I do agree that the there's certainly a larger aesthetic range in the game. I think spaghetti and satisfactory can also be pretty. It's certainly a different kind. That it's kind of like oh that looks cool, but it certainly is more varied. Spaghetti and factorio. Still has a charm to it, but all right, I'm done with these forever. I don't want one of those clogging up my inventory. I don't need a lot of random coal in my inventory. I don't need the five spoilage. Goodbye. There's something satisfying about spring cleaning your inventory with destructive ammo. All right, so red belts will get me more iron as well as steel furnaces. Oh, I'm gonna need a lot of red belts though. I don't know why I forgot about this until just now. I'm gonna need red belt to go from the ore patch all the way to the, the smelters as well. Satisfactory, you can lattice belts. Like, I the first Let's Game It Out video where he like literally weaves the belts like a bat, like basket weaving. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Okay, so that'll actually save me coal. 
I've always thought it's weird that these don't consume more kilowatts. So you literally use half as much coal for smelting um, in steel factories. Or another way to think about it is you can smelt a red belt of iron without changing your coal input when you change to these. Yeah, in Satisfactory, you can certainly build in ways that look kind of like very unrealistic, like with floating platforms and stuff, for sure. But even then, some people don't mind the look of floating platforms. It is still a preference thing, but I do kind of agree that like... I, I like the way I phrased it earlier. There's a larger range of aesthetic possibilities. Whether or not they look bad or good is more a preference thing, but... For each given person, they like a certain range of looks in Satisfactory, and that's certainly going to have a lot of things outside of that range. In Factorio, I think most people find more percentage of other players' builds to look palatable, um, if that makes sense. But yeah, so at this point, I really maybe need a second belt of iron. Problem is, where am I going to get that iron? Because this is not much more than one red belt. So maybe I just need to focus on turning this to red. Instead of worrying about other things. So we'll, we'll look at that then. Um, I'll feed this with some of my other stuff so it can spend a little bit less iron. From You still haven't even made one underground? Oh my. This is going to take some time. This will take some time. Okay, so basically where we need it the most is from the splitter forwards. But yeah, I'm going to need a few red undergrounds here. So we can handcraft a couple. Save ourselves a few slots. Or a few red belts there. And then change that and that. Okay. Then we're gonna need to upgrade these last ones. Need to upgrade this underground. And then from there we have quite a few upgrades to make. <laughs> uh, Glam, have you seen the Let's Game It Out video that he put out just, I don't know, last week or two weeks ago? Because he certainly uh, goes in that direction. I probably shouldn't do that right now, actually. That's just gonna cost me more steel and more iron, which I can't afford right now. I'm working on belts. And my copper is hurting a little bit as well, but we can improve that. At least a little bit, just by replacing the furnaces. That's nice. Oh, stretch time. Uh. You at home, stop sitting like you are a ferret and you don't have a spine. You do have a spine. You're not a ferret. Sit up straight. <laughs> uh. Uh. Drink some liquids. And take care of yourself. Do we have more red belts yet? I don't even know. Where are all these circuits going? Splitters? I guess splitters do need five circuits, and those need ten. So it's actually 15 circuits per red. I don't think I realized they were quite that expensive. Um, but what I can do to help things along a little bit is continue recycling. 
these things. And that will help. Okay. Yeah, red belts are very expensive. They're not that expensive in the long run. Like 11 plates a belt is not crazy, but when you're when you're just starting them and they haven't built up at all, they get very very expensive. Um and obviously like ratio wise compared to regular belts, you know, they're 4 to 5 times more expensive. Like the undergrounds are about 5 times more expensive and the transport belts are like 6 times more expensive. 8 crazy because these are not three they're really only 1.5 each and then the splitters are about double double to triple so yeah hey shield flyer welcome welcome glad you've been enjoying the content maybe i also should have stopped my research because that would have helped things back up Although, I probably am still pretty far from backing up. Yeah, never mind. We still have a long way to go before the research stops running. Can I try one thing for you? Uh, probably. Uh, let's get rid of this iron ore. I don't like it. And then, yeah, so we need to upgrade here. Getting there. Need a few undergrounds. Oh, we have a lot of those tier one assembling machines too. So we probably won't need to make those for a while. <laughs> what is this other than Factorio and why should you play it? Um, I mean, it's hard to summarize. It's just a really fun factory game. Um, automating things is very uh, rewarding and the game has a lot of tools to make things easier for you the further you go so it doesn't ever feel too overwhelming although that I mean many players get overwhelmed but like the game gives you all the tools you need to do things easily which is cool like blueprints and trains and and just a lot of quality of life features to make gameplay more smooth so You had Pi Red Belts unlocked for at least 100 hours before you started using them. Yeah, the Pyanodon's Red Belts, that's expensive. <laughs> when you compare the Pi Red Belt to the Pi Yellow Belt. On a ribbon world, is so small, can elevated rails go over the void to make a loop? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean, but I doubt it. I don't know much about ribbon worlds. We have enough now. Can we finally get fast iron? Okay, so that's now red. So then we need a red splitter. Right there. Another red splitter. There we go. There's our first benefit from a red belt. We'll be seen there. And now here. And then a few more, and we will be golden. All right, there we go. That should help our iron problems quite a bit. And what I will do, so here's a good example of where belt, or I should say lane balancing, actually can matter, because Normally lane balancing doesn't really matter at all, but when you've got red belts 
that then go onto yellow belts, the amount that can fit on one lane could end up contributing to the other lane over multiple yellow belts. Um, I'm having trouble explaining exactly what I mean, and I'm only 80% sure that I'm right, because I'm having trouble convincing myself right now, but I'm pretty sure when you've got red belts that end up going on to yellow belts at various places, yeah, like there are times that this isn't enough to fill up a yellow belt, but all the extra reds on the left are. Uh, I could still be wrong about this. I'm not totally sure. I'm gonna build one, uh, but I'm not entirely certain it's gonna do anything, but I think it does. Uh, that's not right. What am I doing? This one. Alright, so then we do that, 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 and that, and that. Uh oh. I should probably go check on that noise. Yep. Oh lord, they munching. Alright, what'd you guys get into over here? So what did they destroy? Three belts and a pole. Three seasons in a movie. Okay, um, so destroy that, and they destroy that one. Okay, there we go. I probably should just get a smattering down here. Shield Flyer, I don't think it's better. I think, um, I think comparing the two can be a mistake. Obviously, there there are some times where comparing the two can be helpful, um, but they're very different games with very different vibes. Even though they are both games where it is firmly a factory game, like that is the entire point of the game is factory. They're still very different because one is 3D and the other isn't. One has a handcrafted map and the other doesn't. One is focused on exploration, and the other isn't. Arguably, there's more exploration now in Space Age Factorio than there was before, but it's still not exploration. Like, it's not like, oh, I need to put a bunch of stuff in my inventory and go off into the wild blue yonder to explore what's over here. There's really nothing like that in Factorio, whereas there is in Satisfactory. Um, so they're just very different games. They feel very different to play, and I don't think you could say one is better than the other. For certain, um, for certain elements within the genre, each game has p places where it's better than the other. Uh, if you're directly comparing like sub elements within the game, so all that to say, I think some people really like. Thank you guys for pointing that out. Um, and that one. Was there anything else? We got them both. Anyway, all that to say, I think both games are amazing. I think both games deserve the praise that they've gotten. I don't think it's fair to try to compare them one to one. Obviously, some players are going to say Satisfactory is their favorite. Some players are going to say Factorio is their favorite. Neither player would be wrong to say such things. Okay, so now I'm going to go off on a Crydax tangent. Which, do, did we need this and could it be helpful if... So if we end up having yellow belts that are consuming ore. Yes. OK, so uh, so basically imagine a world, imagine a world uh, where this. Where, you know, this has been fed onto various belts and all of those belts are consuming the left side. So then we end up with a red belt that has 15 on one lane and zero on the other. And then we're merging that or splitting it off of the bus that it's on to then go onto this belt, which now 
has a maximum of 7.5 coming from that one lane, even though we have 15 available. And so the reason it's not getting that, that 15 is because we're not on both sides. So setting up something like this actually is necessary when you have uneven consumption on lanes. Setting something like this up will make sure that you're getting um, maximum utilization. If you're generating a full red belt, it doesn't do anything to help. Is that true? No, it, it does. It does. It does do something to help. So so let's say I didn't have this. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm also not 100% sure. But I'm, I'm... This is what you do. As a mathematician, as a scientist, you, you go with a hunch, you, you convince yourself you're right, or you figure out that you're wrong. Um, no, no, no. I know you can't get more than one red belt out of a red belt. Um... That assumes the red belt is being consumed evenly. No, kind of my point is the red belt isn't being consumed evenly. So so let's say we start out... All right, let's figure this out. So we start out with a red belt full of whatever it's full of, right? And we're not doing the lane balancer. That's the assumption right now. So then we split off at multiple points that belt, and they go over here to get consumed by things. And maybe I have one thing that's consuming let's say exactly 7.5 of this, I'll just call it iron. And then I have this one also consuming 7.5, grabbing from the same lane. So now after both of these, and I know that we're splitting off, so it's technically only getting half, and this is only getting half of a half, so it's really a fourth. So technically a fourth would carry on. But for the most part, what that's gonna do is it's gonna empty out this lane. So it's gonna look like this in terms of density. So then, at that point, if we then went to go um, split off once more, and now we have one that needs 15 a second. Uh, you're right, this is happening after the balancer, so it makes no difference. Nope, you're right. Yeah, this won't do anything. So all that, the only reason it would help is if I did this balancer at this point in the process, after we've consumed unevenly. Um, yeah, all right, well, sad. But this is why it's good. This is why it's good to research and investigate. You learn things, or you, in this case, I probably knew that very fact at various points, but I haven't thought about it in that way for a while, so just now I had the wrong impression. Come on, guys. Why are you attacking belts? Get out of here. Okay, so, what are we doing? Uh, we're on episode four. We've gotten steel going. We've gotten red belts going. I think that's going to be the screeny for the episode. Red belt. Success. Um, and then, at this point, we're mostly protected. House pollution cloud. It's starting to spread pretty big. Almost to the shores. And yeah, that this is the base. That's probably the offending base. Or is it the offended base? A little bit of both. That one too. So I probably need to take out those bases. Uh, why don't we go do that? Let's grab some bullets. And maybe a few more gun turrets. A 2x2 balancer isn't symmetric. Uh, it's not. Yeah, I guess the smallest ones might not be, but can't you build it so that it's symmetrical? Maybe a 2x2 two, two two balancer looks like that. 
Do you mean do you mean a two by two balancer plus lane balancer? Um, people use balancers to mean various things. Sometimes they mean lane balanced. Sometimes they just mean belt balanced. Those are different. Uh, and most often when people are talking about balancers, they just mean belt balancers that are input and output unlimited, which means any combination of full belts on the input will fully make it through the balancer to be evenly ba distributed amongst all the various output belts that exist. Um, however, what it won't do is balance left and right lanes. Most balancers don't do that. Those generally people call them lane balancers to, to differentiate. Um, what am I doing? I need to change this to my combat one. Alright, those nests, oh, I couldn't quite see it, but they definitely have more health. Last time I checked, they were at 450, but that was a while ago. They're probably at 500-something now. Ah, the optimal 2x2 two two lane balancer is not symmetric, yes. Okay, yeah, and you are talking about lane balancers. I gotcha. Does turning off biters turn off enemies on other planets? So you can... Um, you can turn off biters. Nests will still spawn because of the mechanic that they revealed in the FFF about capturing. And on other planets, it's a similar story where the stuff that needs to spawn still will, but you can basically do a no combat run still. Um, which is nice. What I don't know is what happened? <sighs> really funny how multiple times I've needed like one more ammo. Um, what I don't know is if biter eggs spoil, I guess they just turn to spoilage if biters are turned off. I don't actually know uh, how that looks. Get our turrets all repaired here. But yeah, balancers in general is something I don't use very much of. The main reason I like lane balancers once in a while is just because it helps you uh, more easily see the production versus consumption as like basically a progress bar. You know, I know people like to build little, um, what are these called? Lamp things to show like your, your production and rates. But by using a lane balancer, regardless of what your usage looks like, now we can walk over here and we can see how much are we using by just looking at the furnaces that are on, right? The furnaces are on up to about here, which means I'm using about 60% of this belt of iron. And that that's just a really nice visual aid. And if you don't have a lane balancer, you know, the full left one might be on and then the right one's like, this full and your brain can't easily parse like what percentage of the iron you're using so there is an actual purpose to this beyond just looking pretty it helps your brain parse what's going on a little faster um and zhao yes biter eggs spoil into biters um once you can produce them so i'm not sure what happens if you have biters off i i assume they just spoil into spoilage like it wouldn't really make sense to add combat into a game that has enemies off specifically to avoid combat so i assume that's what happens but i don't know for sure imagine a tougher version of pyanodons where weather is present uh i assume that is exactly what we'll see <laughs> I don't know if it'll be weather in particular, but different planets kind of having different effects is already what vanilla Space Age has. I say vanilla Space Age, that's kind of an oxymoron, but... Uh, Aloyer, I don't know for sure. I want to say it's Big Biters. At least I read or heard that somewhere, but I don't actually know more than that vague thought that popped into my mind when you asked that. So, un uncertain. But yeah, look at all these red belts we already got going. So we got red belts. Beautiful. Uh, I need to upgrade. What else? Anything else? I don't think so. This iron patch has lost a lot of juice. Already, we're not getting a full red belt out. That is unfortunate. 
So what I really need to do is upgrade, and this will cost a lot of resources, but that would be upgrade the entire belt from here to red so that then we can get whatever we're not using for steel added back into my normal iron belt. But that's going to cost a lot. Um, the text up here certainly looks different. I think they made it bold font or they changed the font or both. You're not crazy. I noticed that too. All right, looks like those are the last two researches I can do without mining oil. So oil's next. Feels weird to already be doing oil. Uh, Shield Flyer, I'm in the very early game. We're only five hours in. So basically zero progress. <laughs> no, not zero, but very, very small amount of progress has been made at this point. But yeah, we'll go fetch oil and then I think we'll call it the end of the episode. I'll still be streaming. Don't worry. This is a 12 hour stream. We're only not even halfway done. And I'm actually still feeling pretty good. So that's good. At some point, I'll take like an actual meal break. I've got I pre made I meal prepped like a boss. Uh, I made some delicious burritos that are in the fridge as well as some pasta. So I've got actual healthy meals. So I'll go grab a burrito at some point and throw it in the microwave for real food. But that'll be later. We're we're still we're still cooking on on just pure excitement and hype energy alone. All right, so, ooh, the new oil. Ooh, bubbling tar pit. Look at it, and it even like has fumes coming out of it. I do think they need to make sure it removes um, grass on top, because that just looks bad. I'm gonna feedback that, actually. Uh, crude oil should remove decorations on top. C title. Nope, I'll just rewrite it. Crude oil should remove decorations on top. Looks really weird to me. Boom. Feedback. But yeah, the new graphics for the oil well is really cool. Yeah, Shield Flyer, it's also worth noting, I do have 2,000 hours in, in Factorio in general, so there's a lot of things that I'm like skipping over or doing within seconds that aren't necessarily things a new player is going to feel like they can skip over or do within seconds. Um, so a new player is probably going to be quite a bit further behind. I'm also not speed running though, so like, if you're a new player who has some factory game experience, there's a world where you're farther than I am at this point if you're trying to rush ahead to get to stuff. What's up, Jay? Thanks. I hope you have a great day yourself. We are certainly having fun so far. And yeah, Apophenia, the new, the new fluid visualization is here. I was talking about it earlier. It's a little bit lacking in some of the bigger features that the actual mod had one of them is locking like I could hit H and lock the fluid visualization and then run around and see the whole pipe network around my base you can't do that anymore it also doesn't gray out the rest of the screen in a certain mode so I do think I like I'm hoping that Rygard still maintains the old mod because the old mod can do some stuff the new the new basic version can't um, essentially it has the basic functionality but not like the full functionality. All right, so we're gonna get these built and I'll just separately build the big power poles. So we'll come back. I also might run out of these guys. Oh yeah, and now they do the new thing. Oh, it's so nice. They do the new thing. Um, the new thing being if it does the same thing power poles do when you click and drag them. So basically, as you're clicking and dragging, normally it tries to go to the max length for the underground pipe, but if it happens, ooh, this could be bad. Uh, if it happens to be like over a tree or a building, 
it'll go back and build it where in the last place where it could have built that pair which is so cool um super handy what's up dudes the pump jack output to the center tile it would be a lot nicer but yeah i have to assume that wasn't intentional it was either an intentional thing or they really didn't like the graphics of it on the center tile and so they changed it um all right what am i grabbing pipes pipes big poles getting rid of some other crap yeah that's good um where are my pipes? Over here. Okay. Cool. Ooh. Where there are biters, there are more biters. So we'll add a second turret there. And where did... I can't find my stupid things. Where are they? Down here. Okay. I should grab power. Yeah, so just like power poles kind of build exactly where they can build, even if the max distance one can't, now pipes do the same thing. And underground belts, I think, also. Dugs again with the gift subs, thank you so much. Very generous. I had forgotten I had big poles when I built those two. Okay, so connected, 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 not connected. So there we go, there's oil. Uh, let's get some basic defenses here. Perfect. See you later after work, dudes. All right, uh, radar. That's the last thing I wanted to do. I always forget radars at new outposts, but it's very useful. And there's a base. R oh my god! Hoo -hoo! We hit the mother load. Another three thousand percent right there when we need it. Plus all the coal if we want to do coal liquefaction. Yes, please. Um. Also, I'm going to steal all this ammo so that I can wipe out this nest real quick. Switch to number nine here. And then, okay, these are at 530 health for the nests or spawners. Right? I do like the way the new cliffs look. They feel more natural for sure. Um, I haven't had to try to build over them yet though. All right, fill you guys back up. Now, what is 200? One thing I don't like that's actually whoa look at that at the top of the screen 165 meters it's showing me how far it is to, to the edge so this basically is about as far as we can go with the 250 by 250 box so i'm gonna need a pump at the top there um otherwise it's gonna eventually stop working that's neat i like that they give you that that helps a lot with kind of finding the edges of your uh, network and stuff. Now that they're limited. For those who don't know, the pipe networks are now limited to 250 by 250 because they completely changed the fluid mechanics. Uh, fluids don't flow anymore. They Oh, look, we actually just hit the cap. It just turned red and it gave us a alert. 
Red alert. Um, so that, yeah, right there is where we're gonna need the pump. So yeah, fluids don't flow, they just all fill or un unfill, uh, you know, vacuum from the, the pipe network that things are connected to. So I will need to make some engines for that. Ooh, we've also got train stuff unlocked now. And now that I've mined some oil, I can do more researches. I do actually have a research, though, that we want to beeline towards, which is this one. Because then our inserters get way more effective. So that's a good thing to uh, prioritize at this stage. Upgrades my, my base without having to do anything. So we'll do that. Let's get some engines crafted. Engines require steel and iron. <laughs> and what I might do, because chemical science requires engine. Well, actually, does it? Does it? It's the same recipe. Okay, chem science is the same recipe. So we need a bunch of engines. I might. Have fun, Sumerian. Enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, 250 tiles is a huge space. I mean, basically, as long as your pipe network fits within a square this large, you're not going to have any problems. So it's really just for, like, base-wide pipelines that it's coming into effect. As far as, like, individual builds, you're not going to run into the limit, uh, which is nice. But, yeah, okay, so hold on. What I'm thinking is if I want to use the engines I'm making for blue science essentially as some, some bus engines for, like, crafting other buildings and stuff. But that feels a little greedy. Because if science is running at full rate, we'll only get a few extra engines. So maybe that's not worth it. Grab some more ammo here. I will also increase that limit. So instead, we'll just make engines down here. Um, maybe I'll have two engine makers because they are slow. Slow as molasses. I need gears and pipes. So let's see if we can do this in a way that makes sense. So engine out. Gear and pipe in. Iron in. Iron in. Seems pretty good to me. Made po this this build made possible by red belts. Talk to your doctor today to see if red belts is good for you. Um, so we need steel. And iron. that belt. Ah, uh, and then we need to do this. I forgot about the steel, but we made it in the end. It worked out. Okay. So there's engines for all the different things that need engines. One of which is pumps. Needs more steel and more pipes. Okay, well this feels like a prime, prime spot for that. Um, I'm sure I'll have other things that need engines, but for now we'll just start with that. There's pumps automated. Oh, you want to know? You want to know what uses engines? Well, let me just alt-click, and there you go. 
there's everything that needs engines. So mostly electric engines and chemical science, and then vehicles. I don't see quality dots on your stuff. Um, so Strad, quality dots show up on things that can be affected. So like right here, you can already see there are two quality dots. On, there's one on crafting speed and there's one on health. So the dots show up before you've done the research. Where the dots won't show up, I think, I'm like 90% sure of what I'm talking about right now. Where the dots won't show up is on things that are currently not changed at all and therefore not displayed on the right side so if there's something that quality will improve that isn't displayed when it's at zero or regular then that won't have a display at all until quality shows up but for crafting speed and health as you can see those are going to be affected by quality once we have quality stuff which will actually be soon now that we have oil and we'll soon have kim kim sai we'll be able to start making modules in the near future so I could get my first uncommon something. Ooh, exciting. But that is not this episode. And we're already an hour and six minutes in, so I probably should wrap up this YouTube episode. Number four. We'll just get the pump set up over here. Should be able to go the rest of the way here. Let's see, I think I think I want to kind of bring this up. To there. Can I send you a copy of the game? Uh no, no, I cannot. Good, good, you know, might as well ask though, right? But no. That would be certainly a breach of the NDA I signed if I were to do such things. So with the new liquid rework, it's always at 100% throughput. Uh, yes and no. So, so throughput is weird now. It's way easier to explain, uh, but it's weird compared to the old system. But if you're new, the new system is much better. Basically, you aren't going to have to worry about throughput for a very long time. Throughput is not limited at all by distance. You could have a spiral pipe that fills up that 250 by 250 area, and it will still throughput from the beginning to the end as fast as anything else. So in that sense, the throughput is unlimited by distance. Distance is limited to 250 before you need a pump. And then finally, it, the actual throughput is capped at 6,000 per second if you are fully opposite from the operation you're doing in the network. And I'll explain what that means. So if you're emptying a pipe into a building, like let's say there's a building that's crafting something and it's crafting about a billion electric engines and it needs lube or whatever. So then it could pull into itself up to 6,000 per second, but that's only if the pipe network is 100% full. So, that means if the pipe network is halfway empty, it would only be 30 per second, right? Or sorry, 30, um, 3000 per second. And same thing with output. If you have your, uh, you know, oil refinery, which might as well craft one, uh, and it was outputting into this and you had a billion speed modules and it's a legendary refinery and all that, then it could output at most 6000 into the pipe network. But that's only if the pipe network is empty. So what you're going to end up having to do, at least when you're mega basing towards the end game and you're having like a, a massive amount of per second in and out, you have to math it out and just look at what is the fastest inputter to the network? What's the fastest thing that's inputting and what is that rate? What's the maximum thing that's drawing from the pipe network and what's that rate? And those two rates together have to be less than 6,000 when you add them. So basically A plus B has to be less than or equal to 6,000 per second, and then you'll be okay. Where A and B are the max input and max output of the pipe network. 
because of because what that means is it will reach an equilibrium where both of them are happy as long as the total's less than 6000. If the total's more than 6000, it actually won't work. There is no such equilibrium where they'll both go at full speed. So there's your kind of primer plus exact numbers of the new network. Um, the new system was better when it was simple and didn't have these limitations. <sighs> yeah, I actually like the limitations. Might be a hot take, but I think I like the new system better with the limitations, personally. I think it felt too, too easy. The new sys, the new sys, the new, the old new system, as in the new system a few months back before they did this update, I think was too easy. But... Yeah, I agree. Test driving is important. We'll see how I feel when I've got my legendary base going or whatever. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call this a wrap for the YouTube episode. I will keep streaming, so don't go anywhere if you're here live. But for those of you on YouTube, as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next episode.